This video is a brief overview of drawing in the software. There are several ways to draw vectors and a number of tools to aid you in the drawing process. Here we are just going to go over a few of the basics as an introduction to drawing, and many of our other tutorials will teach you a variety of techniques in much more detail. Let's start off with the basics, and I'll show you how to draw some lines and curves in your software. So first of all, we're going to take a look at your Draw Polyline tool. If I select that, I can go straight into my 2D view, and right away you'll notice that the Smart Cursor tells me where the location of the center point of my cursor is, and as I move around my job, that will change and tell me exactly where I am based on the setup of my job. Now what I can do is I can start by left clicking and dropping in single points wherever I'd like them to be. And my smart cursor will update. You'll see that I have a length and an angle of that line. So that's the length of the actual line and then the angle from the point I had just left. Now, because I'm just single clicking, I'm getting straight lines. And if I choose to hold in my left mouse button, and pull away, you'll see that now I can start to draw with a curve. And now I can go ahead and set up that curve and I can continue on drawing curves from that point. Now, if I decide that I'd like to stop drawing curves and go back to drawing a straight line, I can just simply press S on my keyboard and now I'm back to drawing straight lines. Now, if I'm done with this particular line segment, I have a couple of different ways I can end this. The first one is I can press the space bar and what that'll do is it will stop that line segment, it will end it, and it will set me up to start another one if I would like. And you'll see that on the left-hand side of my screen, the Create Line Polyline Tool dialog is still open. And I can go ahead now and start to create a brand new line segment if I'd like. Now, if I choose to want to actually terminate that but connect the two ends together, I can press Tab on my keyboard, and you'll see that it's connected with a nice line there for me. And also you'll see that the create line slash polyline dialog is still open. And there's one other way that I can terminate a line as I can go ahead and start drawing. And then I can press escape on the keyboard. And what'll happen is the line stops and the dialog is now closed and I'm back to my pick tool. Now let's go ahead and delete all those. And the next tool we'll look at is going to be your draw a curve. So if I select that, I can simply go into my 2D view again and draw three dots or click down three dots. And you'll see that as soon as I drop the third dot, then the software creates a nice smooth curve between those three dots. And that will continue going as I draw my shape. And now the same thing works. I can go ahead and I can press the space bar and I can start a brand new curve if I'd like. I can press the tab key and that will finish it off with a nice curve if I want to, or I can go ahead and choose to press escape and that will terminate that and put me back to my pick tool again. Let's look at how to draw some shapes in the software. And to demonstrate this, we're gonna look at how to draw a circle. So over here under our create vectors, you'll see this first icon is draw circle. So if I click on that, you'll see that up pops my draw circle dialog. I've got some options here. I can choose to go ahead and define my center point. And then I can also define whether or not I'd like to have my circle drawn by the measurement of its radius or its diameter. So in this case, let's make this zero, zero. That means it's gonna draw in the center of my job space because that's where my center is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and choose my radius and we'll make it a half inch radius and I'll click create. And you'll see that that circle got created in the center of my job, just like I expected it to be. Now, also what I can do, seeing as I have all this set up already, I can click anywhere in my job space and the dialog will pick up that center location and draw me another circle with a radius of 0.5 of an inch. And I can do that all over the place. Now I can also go ahead and freehand draw in a circle by left clicking and dragging my mouse. And you'll see that right now I'm setting the radius or the circles being drawn by the radius measurement. And that's because over in my draw circle dialog, I have radius selected. Now if I go ahead and choose diameter over here, if I go ahead and draw my circle, then that will be based on the circle's diameter. Now, if, for instance, I knew exactly how big I wanted my circle, I can just go ahead and start the circle, start drawing it, and I can type in the diameter, in this case, of one inch D, and you'll see that automatically my circle got drawn 
with a diameter of one inch. I can do that again, and I can go ahead and type 0.75 R, and that will give me a circle with a radius of 0.75, which in this case makes a diameter of one and a half inches. Now, if for instance, that dialog wasn't opened up and I wanted to know what the dimension of the circle was, or I wanted to make some changes to it, I can just go ahead and select that and press E on my keyboard and that will pop that dialog. Now, if I'd like to go ahead and transfer the measurements of this circle into my dialog, I can do that as well by holding down my shift key and choosing this circle and off we go. Now, another great feature of this, if I go ahead and draw a star anywhere here, and I close down this dialog box, if I press E while this star is drawn, the software automatically knows that it's a star and to bring up the edit dialog for the draw star options. Now, a lot of the other vector creation tools for creating ovals, for creating rectangles, for creating polygons, all work exactly the same. Now we'll open up a pre-prepared file to use in the software so that we can have a closer look at the snapping. These options are gonna allow you to create very accurate vectors and drawings. With any vector drawing exercise, it's always a good practice to review your snapping settings to ensure you are using the most efficient settings for the type of vectors that you're gonna be creating. To access those, we can go up to Edit and then go down to Snap Options, or alternatively, we can press F4 on our keyboard. Now, this will bring up our Snap Options. In the top right-hand corner, you'll see our basic options, and that is Snapping to Guidelines, Snap to Guides to Geometry, Snap Distances, Snap to Job Center and Corners, and we have our Snapping Radius, which essentially means that this is how close you will get to a snap point before you will snap to it. We also have geometry snapping and smart snapping. When it comes to geometry snapping, this allows us to snap to various points in our geometry. Smart snapping will allow you to snap to things that aren't represented by geometry in particular, and we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. Now this is the default setup, and you'll notice that snap to grids is currently turned off, and also under smart snapping, object bounds is turned off. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now up here in our upper right hand corner, you're gonna see these three icons here. Two of them currently now are blue in the background and the last one isn't. The first one is gonna be your toggle geometry snapping on and off. The next one is gonna be toggle smart snapping on and off. And the third one is toggle grid snapping on and off. Now, because these are both turned on, then they're both blue in the background. If I go ahead and turn one of these off and then press F4 on my keyboard again to bring up my snapping options, you'll see that the geometry snapping has been turned off. Now, if I go ahead and turn that back on again and press OK, you'll see that now it's turned back on again. And that's the same for all three of these. So let's turn off these first two and turn on the grid snapping and have a look at that. As you probably noticed when I turned that on, that these dots show up in our 2D view. And this is actually the grid that we set up. So if we press F4 on our keyboard again, what will happen is we'll see those snapping options, but we see that we have our grid spacing set up to be every half an inch there should be a dot on our grid. And so that's what these refer to. Now if we go and click on our polyline tool and we bring it out into our job space, as we get close to one of these snap points, or one of these grid dots, you'll see that it automatically gets snapped to that. And I can easily go ahead and snap to any of these to get me some nice accurate geometry. Now I can just press escape. And also what I can do is I can choose to select an actual object. And as I drag it around, you'll see that the center of that object or wherever I grab that object from will snap to one of those grid points. So that's kind of neat as well. I'm just going to press Control Z to undo that and deselect that. Now, another thing I'd like to point out is that we can use guidelines. So we can pull in guidelines by left clicking and dragging from one of the rulers to our actual job space. So here's one there and I can drag one down from up above and it will snap to increments, but also will snap to my grid. Now, if I want to go ahead and delete one of these, I can right click and I can delete that, or I can turn on and off my full set of guidelines, or if I would like to, I can drag those off the page and then they will go away. 
For now, I'm gonna drag two more of those back on again, just for a second, so that we can see a couple more snapping options that we have set up. Let's go back to our Draw Polyline tool, and I can snap to a guideline. I can snap to an intersection of a guideline. I can snap to my start point, and I can snap to any of the edges of my actual job space, which is handy to have. I can just press Escape now and delete that out of there, delete this line as well, and then we'll just drag those guidelines off of there, and we're back to where we started from. Let's turn off our grid snapping and turn on our geometry snapping, and we're gonna have a look at some of the options that we have here. To demonstrate that, we're gonna use our polyline tool. Now what I can do is, with that turned on, is I can snap to different parts of my geometry. I can snap to things like the center point of objects, and you'll see that as soon as I got to the center point of that circle, I was automatically snapped to the center. The same with the star or the rectangle. I can snap to places where our line segments intersect, like corners of this box, or even where this line segment interacts with this or connects to this actual arc at the end, so I can snap this. I can snap to midpoints. You'll see that as soon as I get close to the middle of that line segment, I'm snapped right to that, and that works everywhere. So this allows me to create some really, really great geometry. So I can go ahead and create a nice triangle that fits perfectly in there by snapping to those snap points. Let's just go ahead and press escape on the keyboard and we're gonna delete that triangle out of there. And let's have a look at our next option, which is gonna be the smart snapping. Smart snapping is a really powerful tool to help you create geometry without having to create a bunch of construction geometry to get the job done. So first of all, let's have a look at the options for this tool. So if we press F4 on the keyboard, up pop our snapping options. And by default, object bound is turned off, but let's turn that on for a minute. We can use our smart snapping to find horizontal or vertical reference points. We can use it to find tangents or perpendicular to tangents. We can find span geometry, and we can also snap to different angle inc increments off of already existing geometry. So let's click OK. Let's draw a brand new piece of geometry using the bounds feature of our smart snapping. And so we're gonna use that to discover how to find the bounds or the corner points of the bounding box around this particular piece of geometry and then draw some brand new geometry. So what we're gonna do is we're going to choose to create a brand new polyline and come down here and I'm gonna wake up this piece of geometry. And when I do, as I move out from that geometry and I find one of the bounds, I see this dotted blue line along with a solid square dot. And that shows me that's the corner of my bounds. If I move up to that, you'll see that I get another solid square dot and that's the top left bounds of my bounding box. Now I can use this to easily draw a nice line that's tangent to this particular era, area of this curve. That's normally pretty hard to find. But what I can more importantly use this for is I can go out here and find this other corner and I can drop a node there and then drop draw a line segment and I can find the bounds of this particular star. And there we go, I can click on that. And then I can find the bounds of this circle and draw a very accurate piece of geometry here that connects all those bounds together. I can just press escape on my keyboard and I'm ready to go. Now you probably would have noticed there's a lot of flashing blue lines and dots there. That's why we, by default, turn off that particular feature. It makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing. So if we press F4 on our keyboard again, we're gonna turn off object bounds and then click OK and delete that line segment out of there. Let's go ahead and explore some of the other features of our smart snapping. Let's use our polyline tool again. And we're gonna drop a node right here on top of that point at the end of this line segment. And then we're gonna pull out to my right and you'll see that I get this nice dotted guideline there. So I know that if I drop a node right there, it's gonna be perfectly lined up with that first point that I dropped. Also, you can see that the angle just below my smart cursor there, it says A is zero. That means my angle is at zero. And as I move around, that angle will snap to 15 degrees, 30 degrees, if I go around to 90 degrees. And also you'll notice as I come up around here, as soon as my 
new line segment or the proposed line segment that I want to make is at 90 degrees to that original line segment, I will get that indication that that angle is 90 degrees. And that's perfect. Now, if I wanted to find the center point at 90 degrees from this point and also this point down here, I just need to wake up this point, come straight off of it. And as soon as I see that 90 degree indication there, I can go ahead and drop my next node. Now coming off of that, if I wanted to figure out what 90 degrees is from the point of the star, I can just reference that, come straight across, and that is actually a point that's from 90, that's at 90 degrees from the bottom of that line segment, the angle there, to be straight across from the point on that star, and I can drop a point in there. Now, if I was looking to find the center point between this point and the corner of that box, I just need to go up and reference that corner, and then come back down to you and you'll see that I get a nice yellow line. And then there's the center point of that and I can just drop in my next node there. And I have that point perfectly done. And I can just press escape on my keyboard and there we have it. Now this is just a very basic overview of the smart snapping and the other snapping features in your software. If you'd like some more information on that, you can go ahead and reference our help file and under the snapping options, there's all kinds of information here for you. Along with at the very bottom of this, there's a great section here about what different icons your cursor will show you so that you know what it's referencing when you're drawing or when you're referencing a node or a line segment. It's a great little piece of information there for you. We also have some other great videos that you can go ahead and watch if you would like. I hope you found that short introduction to drawing in our software helpful. Like I mentioned before, there are plenty more tutorials that help demonstrate a variety of drawing techniques in the software, and a selection of those can be found below in the related video section.